All right, um, you know, uh, we practiced last night. Um, uh, Jeff uh, was unable to practice with the ankle, so uh, won't, know, won't know more about him until probably tomorrow or later in the week. Uh, so Heinrich and Chuba obviously took the reps uh, behind him. Um, that was really, really the one major injury. You know, Blaze came out of the game with a with a banged up shoulder, but I, we think you know we'll see him tomorrow if Blaze can go. We expect him to be able to go. Um, but that was it, uh, injury wise. Obviously, as a team, you know, the guys are disappointed. Um, um, but uh, I think that they understand that uh, we have a chance to be a good team, and it starts this week for us coming back home. So we're excited to play at home, excited to play in front of the home fans, and um, I'm excited to, to watch them do that. So I'll answer all your guys' questions. Is that a, is that a uh, after the game with Jeff? I think you indicated high ankles at a high ankle. They said that to me on the field. Um, but it doesn't appear to be one of those like you know four to five week true high ankle you know it doesn't appear to be that so you know he moved around last night he was kind of you know we have that the training area where the guys are not practicing and he was moving around in there so um, you know with quarterbacks you know I never know what the ankle what that's going to mean and so I'd have to see him before I know much more about that. You know, um, I you know I, I I just leaned back on kind of what I said at the end of training camp that I felt like we could win with Chuba and I felt like we could win with Heinrich. Um, they be, they both can run, so we can maintain some of the things that we're doing, quarterback run wise. You know, I think some of the plays we've called have been quarterback draws, and you know maybe they've been seen as like a scramble, but we've called some quarterback draws that those guys can execute at a high level. So um, I think both those guys can run the offense. Obviously, right now, with where we're at right now, the offense isn't doing what we want it to do in general. So, um, you know, I think all of us, you know, as a team, have to we have to be better on offense to have a chance to win games. Um, but I have a lot of confidence in both those guys, and I think they both bring unique skill sets to the table. Just to be clear, just to be clear though, if, if Jeff is able to go physically, he'll, will he be the starter? Um, I, I'm going to see him practice first. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, Jeff's our starting quarterback. So if this hadn't happened, he'd still be out there. That being said, we can't keep turning the ball over. Okay, so there's there's that fine line of, and not every you know when you're the quarterback, not everything's your fault. You know they, they snap the ball and it hits a guy in motion. You know sometimes that's the quarterback's fault, sometimes it's someone else's fault. So um, this is this is a top down starting with me. Hey, we have to we have to be better. We can't be minus eight. You know and that's just that goes without saying, right? Um, it's just that that can't be in our building, not out there in the world. That can't be the only narrative. You know in our building. In our building, it can't be, well, we'll just turn the ball over. You know, it's 13-7 with six minutes left to go in the third quarter, and we lose 36-14. Like, that's not acceptable either. So um, we're asking everyone just to get a little bit better, you know. Uh, but all that being said, you know, Jeff's our quarterback, uh, but Jeff, Jeff also has to protect the football. Um, you know, when the ball's in the ground, I'm, things are going to happen, especially on the road. We have to dive on the ball and just hold the ball there. So I'm obviously not getting that point across. I'm going to get it across to everybody. Um, and move, as we move forward. But I don't know what he looks like, so I just don't want to comment too much. If he was 100% healthy, I'd have him out there with the ones. How do you practice that, though, diving on the ground? I mean, this is this effort. I mean, how do you work on something like that? Yeah, so, so, you know, I look at it, and I get upset about it, right? Like, why do we not jump it on the ball? And, and Ron Brown has been a tremendous kind of, like, mentor to me here. And, uh, you know, I go out to practice every night. Coach Darlington's out there, you know, um, watches practice. And Coach Darlington will talk about, you know, hey, we had the – punters and kickers tackle, you know, Coach Osborne came to practice last week. And so I, I listened to my mentors and my elders, and Ron's one of those. And Ron said, you know, Matt, we're all sitting here saying that why didn't Jeff jump on the ball? But every day in practice when the, if the ball's in the ground, what do we tell Jeff to do? We tell him to get out of the way. And, you know, he talked about a play in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. And, and you know, um, you know, Cam didn't, you know, Cam Newton's the, the most amazing competitor I've ever been around in my life. Like, I, 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 my life was changed by being around Cam Newton. Okay, so um, Jeff's a competitor. So Ron's point was like, well, you know, why don't we why don't we practice that? Why don't we practice having the quarterback dive on ball? Obviously, we can't do it in the flow of a team period. Or, you know, I was at Penn State when Kerry Collins, uh, as a sophomore quarterback, dropped the snap and went down to pick it up, and a defensive lineman broke his hand, and all of a sudden he was out for the year. So uh, Ron's point was we should, you know, we should be training that. And I've never thought about that. I haven't had that problem before. But, you know, my job is to fix the things that are happening. So, um I know Jeff would never not go get the ball. I just think Jeff tried to reach down to because he wanted to make a play. The kids want to win so badly. But it's like, hey, guys, like, 
it's the ball's in the 32 yard line. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just dive on the ball. Let's kick the field goal and let's go up three nothing. So, um, we're learning how to win. It's painful right now. It's painful. It's painful. It's painful. I get it. Everyone's painful, but um, we're not gonna. We're never gonna waste a crisis. You know what I mean? We're not gonna waste. We're not gonna waste these losses. Like, we're 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 gonna learn from it. Yeah, you know, I, I just saw him this morning at breakfast. I sat down, talked to him. I said, "Are you ready? You know, are you ready to go? Ready to go?" He said, "Yeah." And, and you know, so he he had like you know, kind of like a little tweak of his groin about a week and a half ago. Um, good enough that he could play, you know, but he hasn't been full speed. If that makes sense, so it could be like the emergency third. And I think that was in reference to the question of like you know who would be the two. Um, you know, Chuba's been doing this to me, so I think he can bring a lot to the game. Um, but that's why he would have been the third guy going in. He went in just because Heinrich lost his helmet. Heinrich's been taking all the two reps with Chubba kind of being a little bit limited. He told me today he feels good. So, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see how the week goes. What do you say for expectations team-wide this week and in general for the rest of the, the non-conference season? Obviously, you have two new teams. Yeah, I mean, again, um, you know, like – this this is kind of this is kind of what you get when you hire me. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what you kind of get. Like um, it's not going to be a quick fix. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to be, we believe, um, built to last. It's going to be built on rock. Um, and so we we take advantage of these we take advantage of these painful painful moments. We sit there and want to say to our our goal right now is to say to ourselves as a coaching staff in three years, we did our best coaching these weeks. So. Um, I understand the, if there's frustration. I understand if there's like, man, why, you know, but um, we're trying to learn how to win. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're trying to learn how to win, and and that's everything. So obviously, can you turn the ball over four times and win? No, I uh, get that, right? But like, why are we turning the ball over? Like, why? Like, I take accountability to the guys. I, I did I did a poor job last week of preparing for the crowd noise. I didn't do a good enough job, and. Um, that's not an excuse. That's me. Honestly, I hate when coaches get up here and say it's on me. I honestly did not do a good enough job. Like, because why? Because the, we were going on silent and we fumbled the ball twice, right? Um, but but why aren't we just diving on the ball? Because because the guys want to win so badly. So we want to win so badly, but we're just not doing the little things it takes to win. And but at the same time, it's thirteen seven with six minutes left. I'm gonna keep saying that. Like that can't happen. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that can't happen. That it becomes thirty six. And. Um, so we're just trying to attack it all throughout the program that everybody sees it. We can't punt the ball 25 yards. We can't – like all these little things come together. But if program-wide, if everybody takes accountability, blocks out the noise, and everyone tries to handle these little things, when it all does come together – because I think we're playing pretty good defense at times. And we're, we're, we're still – we're running the ball okay. If, we, if it all comes together, it'll, it'll be, I think it'll be pretty hard to deal with, right, because we'll be running the ball for about 250 a game. We'll be protecting the football, good on special teams, good on defense. So that's, that's the plan. It's just not all together yet. So we're going to play and face an excellent team that came here in 2017 and won. Northern Illinois is a winning culture. Programs are either winning or losing programs, in my opinion. And so Northern Illinois is a winning program led by a man who won there as a player and is now winning there as a coach. They went to Boston College, and they won the game at Boston College, beat an ACC team. Obviously, they played a rivalry game last week. They lost the game. They turned the ball over three times. They've got a quarterback who's, you know, power five quarterback. They've got a tough offense. You should see their D-line. It's as good a D-line as we faced. So um, I'm, I'm not setting anything for anything other than I think we have a good team. We're doing things that are causing us to lose. We have to fix those things. It's just so incremental to me that it's just – I'm just right here in the moment right now. Turnovers aside, uh, how, how many yards did you feel like your offense left out on the field related to explosive plays? Uh, how do you guys get more of whether Sims is in the game or not? Yeah, I think we had – I think we had – I can't remember if it was four or six plays of over 20 yards. Now, one happened at the end, but still, like, I mean, we're, we're going to play, you know. Um, I, I think when I look at it, okay, because – um, we're just not in sync offensively. And I, I 100% blame myself because we're really good on defense and we're really chaotic on defense. And I think I, if I would have planned this out better in my brain, I think our, our offense just never quite got in rhythm in camp because they're always kind of reacting to this, the blitz. I mean, we had eight sacks and could have had 12 or 13 versus a really good offense. Like, So I think we kind of became very reactive in camp. And we didn't start off with – an FCS school to get our rhythm, right? We started off with Minnesota, a top 10 defense. And then we went to Colorado and played in that. So 
So we're just trying to find some rhythm. So I don't know if I'm answering your question other than it's not just the turnovers. We're not playing well enough the way that we want on offense. But I saw some flashes. I saw Billy make some plays, you know, and I came out of it like, hey, we got to get the ball in Billy's hands more. I think you see, I mean, we take the ball the first drive and everything's not perfect and we still down in field goal range. We take the ball, we answer the call, we take it 64 yards down there, we have it on the 32-yard line, it's third and five or 35, whatever it was. It's third and five, two downs, and then the ball hits the ground. So um, it's, it's, it's about the turnovers, but it's also about just the overall flow and execution and getting in rhythm. And what, you know, when I say when I say this is what you get when you hire me, not, not to go on two, hopefully. What I mean by is I don't. I'm not going to change. I'm gonna, we're we're going to double down on our process. We're going to double down on what we're doing. We're not going to just be like, oh, maybe we should do this. Like, it's working in some areas. Some other areas, it's slow. We're just going to keep staying with it. So, I don't know if I'm answering your question, Sam. Does that, I mean, I think we should have had. I think we could have had some more plays. But you got to stay on the field, right? You got to stay. You got to get some points. And I think the once that happens, we'll get a little more confidence on offense. And I think you'll see the guys playing with a little more swagger. I don't want to talk too long, but I do want to say this. I like along with Billy. I thought we saw like we saw Fedoni start to be a, a factor in the passing game. We start, you know. So I think we're seeing some guys kind of step up, and um, I just have to do a good job as the head coach of just pushing the guys through till we get to the other side of this. Um. I thought the moment wasn't too big for him. What I loved about what Heinrich did was three times he had a guy blitzing and hitting him in the face, and he stood in there and threw it. And that's the courage that we need. Uh, I thought he, you know, he looked excellent running the football, you know, which we knew. But I, I was happy to see him, you know. I mean, even even he threw the post to Marcus, which was incomplete, but you know, he, he knew where to go with the ball. So I, I have a lot of confidence in Heinrich. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Okay, uh, like we like we called a couple of them in this game, and they just played kind of off of us. And one, he turned and found Borkacher, and Borkacher got a first down. Um, you know, we we called some play action plays in this game, and and they pressured us, and they blitzed, and the quarterback had to get outside. One, you know, he scrambled and hit Billy. So I would say we have to be a little bit more aggressive, probably um, pushing the ball down the field. Um, but at the same time, when we call them, we have to execute them a little bit better. So to me, the I think several things can be true. The turnovers are one thing, and that's so obvious that we all know it. But then kind of what you're saying, some of the other explosive plays, when we're running the ball, kind of the way at times we're hit, we just need an explosive play off of that. And so, um, you know, Marcus, Marcus to me it looks like he's rounding in. Like, you know, he didn't practice all training, training camp, you know, with first the hand and the knee. Marcus looks like he's coming around. Um, really would like to see Jalen and Malachi kind of come around this week. We're playing them, so it's their time to go. And, um yeah, but I'd like, I'd like to see us be a little more aggressive in those areas. Are any of the other freshman receivers close to being in the picture, like Jaden Dallas or Jaden? Yeah, Jaden has that broken arm, so he's 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 back to practicing this week, but limited, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know when he'll be ready. When Jaden's ready, I think he'll play. Fleeks, um, I think Fleeks has really come on, and so he'll he'll help us this week. Um, Jeremiah Charles is, to me, is, is, is coming on. Um, we have we have a kid from right here at Lincoln High that you know walked on for us. You know Kenneth, I think Kenneth can help us, but they're just kind of you know they're kind of waiting for their time. If that makes sense, Bryce Turner, those guys are waiting for their time. So Jeremiah probably the closest, but I I, I think our receiver I, I think our receivers it's going to kind of click. I, mean, I really believe that. I, I think again just staying on the field and getting into a rhythm will help our offense. Well, th their opportunities will come based upon, like, the week, how, how they prepare during the week. You know, I mean, they're still freshmen, you know, and they're still learning. Part of it, you know, part of it is uh, about being a second-team receiver is, you you know, if you really want to play, you have to kind of back up three positions, and so you have to really kind of know a lot, and they're just not there yet, so they're kind of backing up one position. Um, you know, we took advantage of Jalen's skill set in the first game by getting him the reverse. Didn't get anything like that called this week. Uh, but I, I think Jalen Lloyd can, can, can play. I think Malachi can play for us. It's just um, – Again, you know, if we're playing 55 snaps, they're not going to play probably a ton. We'd like to have a game where we play 70, 75, 80 snaps so we can get them on the field a little bit more. Um, but they have to have really good weeks of practice, preparation. We take a test on Friday. That test has to be excellent. Um, you know, 
the, the guys that are freshmen that are playing really well, the ones that came in mid-year, you know, like Cam Lenhard, Prince Will, those guys that came in mid-year, they went through the culture, they know everything. Um, when you see the way they're playing, other than Riley, you see the way that they're playing, you know the process works. It's just, you know, some of these guys are just a little later to the party at that position. No, Riley's going to play for us. Yeah, Riley's going to play for us. We, you know, we got Sua in. You know, the, to me, the way, you know, we, we're going to do everything we can to win now, always. But the way you build the program to have is, is taking advantage of guys for four games at a time. So we got Sue in there a little bit this game. Um, remains to be seen if he's a four-game guy or not. You know, it's good to get him in the game. Um, but Riley, Riley's, Riley's going to play this year. How promising is that freshman Eli class and Ebert and um, the Judo guy, uh, Wayland's a second-year guy in college. When you look at that, I think three of those guys are on the field at one time, all freshmen, just to be able to be that far ahead of some of these guys. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, said, I told you guys I really liked the uh, I really liked the um, the D line group, and um, they're really coming along. And, and that, you know, like I run the defensive scout team, trade team. That's one of my jobs at practice. I mean, I like I like those guys that aren't really playing yet. I like Leslie. I like I like Mashake Shack. I like all those guys. So they're all going to play at some point. So, um, you know, I just I hope I hope I hope you guys feel like I'm honest with it. You know, like when you guys would ask me about the D line depth and training camp, I'm like I like it. I think I like those guys. I just think that some of them are young. But um, that's going to be a strength for us for a while. You know, I, you look out there, you look, you know, Makai Bear, you know, a lot of those guys are, you know, they're, they're, they're showing up and they're playing. You know, we kind of made the transition. Jamari's back, so we let him play D-line instead of the jack position in this game. So I think we have a lot of guys that can help us. Um, I think we recruited a good group there. I feel the same way about the receivers. There's just a lot more to know at receiver than there is on D-line. So it just, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, again, it's just – it's just not going to be a quick. We're not going to do quick fix things. We're gonna we're gonna develop the guys. Malachi is going to be one heck of a player here. Jalen's going to be one heck of a player here. Jeremiah Charles is going to be one heck of a player here. They're going through the process of becoming a good player. Dwight Boodle got in the game and played. You know, I just met with Dwight earlier today. Dwight Boodle is he's going to be a fantastic player for us. And you know what? He got in against Colorado and played a little bit. Played a couple snaps. Like he's going to continue to accelerate. So. Um, I think there's a lot of young players. I, I do want to make sure I mention one guy if it's okay. Like Kobe Bretts. Kobe Brett's got in that game, and he, I mean, he's coming on. So I'm excited about a lot of the young players um, that are playing. They're, you know, this was this was not an easy way to start, not the record we want, but I see some things from some of those guys that tells me they're going to be really good. How tricky is it, or is it not, to manage the four-game rule with certain guys? Like, are you looking ahead at the calendar? Like, people like to use him this week, maybe we'll save him for later. How do you how do you play that with the four-game rule? That's that's my job. I have to do a good job of that. I think it's just very simply. Who can help us win and who can't? Does that make sense? So if they can help us when we play them. It's not like we're trying to prepare for the future. That would be a terrible message to send to the Rhymers of the world. It's just we're not going to waste guys in games, if that makes sense. Like Boodle's playing, and Boodle's playing this year for us. So he might have only played five or six snaps so far, but it's because we think he's going to play throughout the course of this year. So we're playing Boodle, if that makes sense. Um, you know, um, there's some other guys like I, you know, like I look at like I, I look at AJ Rollins. I think he can help us. He hasn't played a ton yet, so I'm like, hey, let's get AJ up and going. So when it comes to the four game rule, it's very simply about, hey, are they ready to help us yet or not? If they're not ready, then I'm just sort of like, hey, get them ready for later in the year because we're gonna have injuries. So a lot of fo- I know I know everyone's like it's two games in and it's there's a lot of football left. <laughs> there's a lot of football left, and so um, the process of like just trying to get a little bit better as a team. It's the same thing for the players. And that is the one thing I pointed out to the guys, right? I'm like, hey, I know we're 0-2, and, and I know, you know, it's natural to say, like, Coach, you have us working so hard and we're not getting the results we wanted. But as a player, like Javen, is, is, is this process working for you? You know, like, are you a better player than you were a year ago? Like, Luke Reimer is all over the field. Nick Henrich is all over the field. Uh, Nash Hutchmacher is one of the best players on the field when he steps on the field. So just per player is it working, and then just taking that same approach with the freshmen, and, you know, Deshaun Singleton didn't even play last Omar didn't even play last year. Those guys are excellent players right now. We just have to get it for the whole team. Coach, you just mentioned a lot of the defensive players. How good of a teacher is Tony White? Oh, uh, wow. I think Tony's fantastic. Um, he has this amazing gift. In, uh, I'll be honest with you, like, that tempo was so fast. That tempo was so fast. I was kind of hoping with some big, big Ten refs that slow the tempo down a little bit, you know, and, like, we, we wouldn't let them run plays before the chains <laughs> got set. And, uh, you know, but it was fast, and that's credit to Sean Lewis. He's an excellent coach for them. Um, but I've never seen, like, a defense be able to get into so many multiple looks versus that tempo, and that's that's Tony's teaching. That's the, the defensive staff. Um, 
but Tony just stays so calm during the game. Like he just he doesn't get emotional. He just sees what's happening, and I think that that you know what. I, I apologize. I don't have the number. You guys could probably. I think we had like, I think we had twenty some guys on defense play over ten snaps. So like you know, again, as I told Reimer and those guys, like I told you, I wouldn't make you play eighty snaps every game. You know, like we're playing forty. I think Reimer played fifty. Some guys are playing forty. Nash played forty. Um, it's, it's because like I, I don't notice a difference because everyone's kind of playing at one standard. Because Tony does such a good job of teaching them and coaching them. I think he's an excellent, excellent, excellent coach. Coach, uh, home opener. Have you thought about? Uh, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Um, you know, um, I came here for a reason. <laughs> I came here because I wanted to raise my kids here, as I've said. I came here because I believe in this place and the leadership. And I came here because I, I know what U University of Nebraska means to college football. And um, um, we made a decision to build it the right way in a way that would adequately represent the values of Nebraska. Um, and so while we're not getting the result we want right now, um, it doesn't mean I'm at all deterred. To, whereas I know some people are like, man, it's been like, you know, however many years of this. For me, it's two games, two games of what we're trying to build. And so I'm so excited to come home. And I'll just say this, like I just sat, like I was almost late. They were panicking because I was just sitting there kicking it with Luke Reimer for like 30 minutes. Um, the fact that he's bought into what we do on defense um, without knowing if it would work or not, like, and, and having a lot of success in another defense, like, I, I, I hope people understand, like, what he's, what he's done for me. What he's done, like, he's helped me make this transition. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I absolutely love it here. Um, hope that we're here for a long time. And uh, being there, you know, like, my wife, my kids, um, it'll be special for me. On game days or just in general? I'll just – I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, there's sometimes, like, you know, we're, we're, we work late or whatever. I walk out of the football offices on the concourse and I make a left. And I love to walk, walk down and see the old the facade of the original Memorial Stadium. And I love to look at the team pictures, you know, of, like, 19, whatever. There's, you ever go with Sat sometime. Like, there's, there's one gentleman who's in, like, a bunch of pictures in a row. We're not really sure who he is. We've asked people. Um – but he looks like the most interesting man. If you, if you go see, if I'm ever walking with you, I'll show you guys. But, um, and again, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying right now in the way that I'm saying it because I want our players to hear it. There's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and what it means to be at the University of Nebraska, the history, the tradition. Like, we have to do everything in accordance to the way this place was built. It was built on a solid foundation, and so that facade still stands. Like that, the original stadium still stands. The original seals are still there, and so. Um, yeah, so I love I love college football. Like I love being at on game day. I don't really pay attention to it. Like, you know, Keith asked me about the flat irons. I was like, I didn't even notice. Like, but uh, being at Memorial State and coming here the first time, um, you know, was 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 this. I mean, not in this job. You don't get to go visit places very often. We came here and you pull in and you see PBA and you see Memorial Stadium. You see the city of Lincoln and you're like, man, this 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 is a special place. You were, you were probably aware of that. We do it every stadium. We go there. We pray for blessings. When they they came in, I asked them if they wanted. To, I said I asked Shadur if he wanted to pray with us. You know, I mean, we, I I pray over every. You know, I'm a public official, but I can have my own faith. And I say pray. We, we, we take a moment of team. Like you know, it's not. It's non. Not, we have Muslim guys. We have non -belie We just take a moment as a team and just. I want that field to be safe for everybody. Um, you know, at, that, at the end of the game, no, one, no one's going to tell me who I am. You know, at the end of that game, they told me, hey, we're going to run right off the field, and they're going to storm the field. I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't care if I get beaten up by a mob. I'm walking across, running across that field, and I'm shaking Coach Sanders' hand. So, no, people can say, what, you know, when you're losing, people are going to say all kinds of things about you. I know exactly who I am. I know exactly who I am. And I'm coaching this team with class, and I'm not changing. And I went over there and I shook that man's hand. I whispered in his ear. And I've never, never disrespected an opponent a day in my life and never will. So, Sir. Well, I grew up in New York City. 
Okay, I grew up. I grew up uh, taking the subway to school. Um, it's my home. I've had many homes, <laughs> but it's one of my homes. Um, you know, my father was a, a, a minister, and uh, the, the, the church that he he had two jobs, uh, but he, he was a teacher, high school coach, teacher, also a minister, was down like you know downtown. Um, so I, you know, my my school field trips growing up were going to the World Trade Center. You know. Um, so I was at UCLA when that happened. I was driving to work. I remember hearing that. Um, so, you know, it's obviously something that's affected my friends, my family. Um, um, so, yeah, so, so it's, I don't have much other to say other than that. Just, you know, it was, it was my home, and my home was attacked. And, um, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, Father, um, his, name, his name's going to, fr- fr- oh, my gosh, I'm embarrassed. My wife will kill me before, um, the, the, the Catholic chaplain that, that that passed away in 9/11, Father Judge or Father. Well, my my wife's sister passed away on TW 800, uh, which happened soon before that. And um, um, so my wife and I, you know, my wife, I was just my first met her, but my wife went through all that. And so um, Father provided tremendous comfort to my wife and her her mother and her father, who are now since deceased. And then when he passed away, you know, just, just the impact that he had. So, I, you know, I think, you know, you grow up in New York City, you take the subway, people are a little bit rude, you don't really say hi to everybody every day. But then something like that happens and, and you see these amazing people who work for an average salary, you know, go running into burning buildings to save people's lives. And I'm so sorry, my wife would be so upset with me that I can't remember father's name, but, you know, he passed away on that day. And so, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm probably not giving you a great thought because you caught me a little bit off guard, because, but it is personal to me. Um, but yeah, that's my home, and so um, something that we should never forget. Any other football questions? I feel like I went out on a dark note there. Anyway, <laughs> the last two questions. I, I, I have this. Uh, so you, you've been you've been the Northern Illinois coach, right? You were a group of five coach trying to upset Penn State the other day. What goes through your mind as a coach when they're in that position? Scariest thing in the the scariest thing in the world is a team or a man that has nothing to lose. And um, right now we're playing sometimes as a team like we have everything to lose because they want to win so badly. And afraid, afraid to lose is afraid to win. Okay, the the the, the owner of the last team that I worked for that's one one thing that David Tepper taught me. He tell me all the time, afraid to lose is afraid to win. And it's a message I'll carry uh, forward in my life. You know. Uh, today's actually his birthday, and so that's a message that I learned from him. Um, afraid to lose is afraid to win. And, again, our guys want to win so badly that they're afraid to lose right now a little bit. And so, you know, um, when I was at Temple, we were playing these teams, and I, we had nothing to lose. <laughs> we're going to go back to our conference next week, so let's go play this game. I just think for us, like, we don't play the Big Ten game again for three more weeks, so we're playing a lot, expectations and this and that, like, what a gift we have coming off of last week to go play and play this game. So, but that was the way I approached it. And again, Northern Illinois has a long history of doing, of, of going in and beating people because they've got really good players and they come from a fertile recruiting area. They've got a cool system. So we're going to have to play really, really well to have a chance to win. All right. Thanks guys.